What about those discriminative methods we were talking about? As we said before, they find a division, a surface between the classes. We're going to talk about a couple of different methods. Uh, the one I want to talk about today is nearest neighbors, and then we'll do separate lessons for each of the, the other two. So the simplest method we're going to talk about is nearest neighbor classification. And it is a discriminative method because we are using the boundaries between, uh, uh, I wouldn't say classes, I'll say examples, right? The boundary is always between examples of the classes. But we actually don't have to do very much training. So the idea is we have some feature space here labeled as blank. It should be x1 and x2. Uh, this picture, by the way, is taken from a classic book, Due to Heart. It was, the original one is Due to Heart. The new version is Due to Heart and Stork. And it's a good way of learning sort of classical uh, pattern recognition. Uh, so the idea is I've got a bunch of examples. The negatives, so the not A's, are these little black points here, so the, 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 the black thing. And then I've got some positive examples, right? And those are the little red ones there. And when I come up with a new point, all right, so there it is in the green, basically that's my new novel test example. And how am I going to label that? I'm going to find the closest training example. So in this particular case, the closest training example is that one. And so I say, aha, uh -huh, the closest one is a positive. So I'm going to label this new one uh, a positive. All right. Now, drawn on this picture, actually, are the divisions themselves. And the computer scientists among you will recognize that as a uh, Voronoi partitioning. Right, when you partition a space uh, using a, uh, a Voronoi method, you essentially carve the space up into these little chunks where this chunk means that if you're in that chunk, this black point is the closest one to you. And so all nearest neighbor is doing is giving you um, a, a Voronoi partitioning of the space. It's, uh, shall we say, pretty easy to implement. It has a couple of problems. One is it doesn't work very well. We'll get to that in a second. It's also very data intensive in terms of the memory of what you need to know, right? So if I give you a million training examples, how many of them do you have to remember, Megan? A million. A million, that's exactly right. Furthermore, every time a new point comes in, I got to find the closest one. So if I was really dumb, you know, I don't have a compute master's computer science degree from, I might list, go through them, all of them one at a time. If I'm a little smarter, I'll use something called a KD tree or some other hierarchical representation. But you're still searching through a lot of these things. So at test time, it's very painful as well. So not only is it a lot of memory stored, et cetera. But let's get back to that doesn't work all that well thing. Well, one of the things that might happen is that I might have, you know, an occasional kind of spurious point. Uh, or I might be in an area where I really don't have too many points nearby. Um, and what I'd like to do is be able to make a more robust decision. Okay? And the way of doing that is referred to as KNN, or K nearest neighbor. And it's really very simple. It's basically the idea, if I've got some new point and it's written here as an X, so that point right there, I don't just find the nearest point. You've got to think like a computer scientist, you find K. So k might be 1, might be 3, might be 5, might be 7. Whatever choice you choose to make, you would look for k. So in k and n, 5 and n, for example, you know, if I have this point x, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the five nearest neighbors, right? And I'll just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And in this particular case, three of them are black, two of them are red. Black is negative, red is positive. So I would classify it as what? Negative, okay? One of the funny thing, well, one of the interesting things about KNN, it works really well, okay? It does have this data intensive problem, and there are methods that we now use that are kind of, they're sort of related to KNN, but this idea of getting a loose consensus is very effective. We're not actually going to talk about things called random forests later, but this notion of consensus. So I don't get the support from just one place or even one classification method, uh, little classifier. This notion of consensus is very powerful.